I think I hit like $30,000 in collapse sales on BeatStars that month. The way that I spend money on ads is I spend $5 a day on Instagram per kit. So TM88 found me from a sample kit ad that I was running on Instagram. Yo, it's your boy Kavi with Producer Grind and this is Straight Sauce. My biggest placements right now are Beautiful with Future and SZA on DJ Khaled's last album. I did Beat the Odds by Lil TJ. And then I did one more like Latin song that went platinum with Omi De Oro called Mood. I've been, I mean, I've been making beats and posting them online for probably like five, six years now, but I really kind of found the, the sauce and like how to make money doing it like two years ago. So I'm from Denver, Colorado, and I got into making music by just, you remember Sharp, his tutorials? I, I got in by doing, um, he posted a how to make an XXX Tentacion type beat video. And I just went down the, the rabbit hole. I, I think the first software I downloaded was LMMS do you, or LMMS. It was like a free rip off FL Studio shit, but I would make beats on there and try to copy his tutorials. But then ever since then, I just, like I, I quit school, I quit hockey and everything. I just went down the rabbit hole. So the first way that I tried to make money was like putting my beats on BeatStars and YouTube, just like everyone does, like type beats. And I mean, when I was in high school, I was making like one to 2000 a month. So it was good money for me back then, but it wasn't anything insane. And I could never really break through with that. But then, um, I switched my mindset to doing like I would send loops out to bigger producers because my channel wasn't popping off. And then I would get 50 50 splits with them on BeatStars. And then that's how I started making a lot of money online. The way I do it is every day I'll send one loop. So I send loop to everyone who ranks. Like if I make a Drake RB loop, I'll email it to everyone who ranks for Drake RB loop on YouTube. And then I just add them. Well, I DM them first just because. I feel like if you're sending loops as just some random person who's never talked to them, you find their email somewhere like it just comes off as like spammy, you know? So if you actually get their email from them in the DM, then I add them to the list and then just blast that shit out every day to all the everyone ranking for that type of loop. So little baby type producers get a little baby loop, Drake people get a Drake loop, blah, 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 stuff like that. When I, like when I first started sending out to other people every day and being serious about it, I feel like I made like a thousand dollars the first month off collab sales on BeatStars. And then after that, I think it went up to 2000. And then the next month was like 4,000. And then it just, it kept doubling every month. And then I think by March of 2021, I think I hit like $30,000 in collab sales on BeatStars that month. I send one sample a day to each like each list of people that I have. So if I if I have five loops that I made that day, I'll send it to like people who do Memphis shit, Lil Baby shit, Drake R&B shit, soul sample stuff. So it could be anywhere from like two to five samples a day, but it goes out to a bunch of different people. Cause I noticed if you send out weeklies, uh, you gotta think about it. You only show up in their inbox once a week. So, if they're out of town that day or they're just not cooking up that day, like they're never going to see your emails. They're never going to check your loops. And then even if they do go on your Dropbox of your weeklies, they'll probably only listen to like a couple of them, choose like the hardest one. But if you send shit out every day, they see you every day in their inbox. And then they might use three of your loops that week instead of one of the best loops that week, you know, same exact loops. I kind of fell off with that after I figured out how to make money with the loop stuff. Cause it just, I mean, I was making way more doing that than making my own beats. So I just doubled down on making loops for like the past two years. So I originally started my channel because I ran an ad with this dude, Holy. And for my, um, 
SoundKit website is kind of like your guys is like you know sell kits whatever other producers kits and stuff like that uh i ran an ad with holy on youtube and it did like fifteen hundred dollars in sales the first day on the kit that i ran an ad with him from and then i was like if i start my own youtube channel then i'll have like a free platform to plug my loop kits and give discount codes for that to kind of drive sales over to there so that was the reason i started it but as of yet, it really hasn't been like a positive time investment because uh, I'm focused more on like growing it and getting it bigger than actually monetizing off of it right now. But I'd say ever since I dropped that video on how I've made like $600,000, um, I feel like I've just become more known in the community and like uh, people all like, oh, I watched that video, blah, blah, blah. So I don't know. I feel like it just kind of helped cement me as like a youtube personality producer kind of guy you know tm88 found me from a sample kit ad that i was running on instagram and he dm me was like you hard whatever blah, blah blah and then i got his email i sent him loops for like two year two years straight never heard anything back i didn't know if he was looking at him or anything and then one day he just dm me and asked me what my number was and I knew something was up and then he called me and was like, we got one on Khaled's album, blah, 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 blah. Didn't hear much about it for like another month. And then Khaled dropped a track list and I found out that I had Future and SZA on that. So that one was crazy. And then the little TJ one was, um, he, he found a beat on YouTube. So it was like a YouTube beat with like 50,000 views or something. It was a Drake type beat. And then he recorded the song on it actually before he got shot, I believe. Um, I think it was like the day before he got shot, I got told about the song by his A&R. And then I think he re-recorded some lines after that, but they took the YouTube beat and then I think they got a bunch of producers to like redo it because they wanted it to, they wanted it to be like higher production or something. So they got KBZ and he redid the whole beat. He kept like the main idea of it, but um, he changed the sonics and whatever, stuff like that. Um, and then yeah, the, that shit dropped the same day as the Future and Sizzle one, and I had no idea that it was going to drop, so that was crazy again. The week it came out, I had the number 21, no, no, 29 song and 36 song on Billboard. Dropped the same week, it's crazy. So the way that I spend money on ads is I spend $5 a day on Instagram per kit. So I just go in on Instagram and I press the boost post button. I run $5 a day. And then, I mean, it adds up when you've got like 20 kits you're adding or you're running ads on. My company Loop Stash has done about $200,000 in sales. And I've literally just, the only way I've grown that is Instagram ads. So you could definitely make a lot of money off uh, sample kit ads on Instagram. Uh, the way that I get it to sound like that, like a real sample is um, I hire like session musicians and vocalists and shit to re-perform the ideas that I write. So like I'll record like a, an idea for a gospel choir and then I send it to this gospel choir that I work with from Nigeria and they'll like re-sing the whole thing on top of my loop. So and then like sometimes I'll get like a violin or a cello player to like come in and redo the stuff that I've written with VSTs. But yeah, that's how I've been doing that. I don't, I don't care though, to be honest, like, I feel like if you keep sauce, you're scared that like, if someone else has it, they're going to be able to take you out or hurt your business. And the way I look at it is like, if I give you sauce today, like, I'm going to figure out some new stuff tomorrow, you know, like, I'm always going to be one step ahead if you're just getting my leftover sauce. I would say if you just started making samples right now, just lock in for like three to six months, like making like three or five samples a day just to get good before you like start sending to people. Cause I've talked to a lot of these like big producers that I work with and they're like, if you send bad samples, like the first email they see of you, they check it out and it's ass, they'll just block you right away. So you want to make sure your shit is like at least decent or good before you start sending stuff out. I would just lock in, watch producer grind, watch, split mind tutorials and just learn how to make loops.
uh logic stock sounds i use that shit all the time like i would say like at least 50 75 percent of the the sounds in my soul samples are all like logic stock sounds but for fl people or people that aren't on logic oh chris hines violin the contact bank that shit is crazy it's like the most realistic solo violin that i've ever heard it's more about how you use the sounds than uh the actual the contact bank because you can i mean i take stock sounds and make them sound fire with processing or another big thing to make your samples better is like especially for like if you're trying to make it sound like an actual sample i always make the soul samples at like 120 bpm and then i speed it up and pitch it up to like 160 to 180 where people will actually add drums on it and shit like that I wouldn't say I know music theory. Like I know some chord names and stuff like that, but it's more like I've made so many loops that I see the patterns now. Like I'll, I can just click in a chord progression without hearing it because I know what it's gonna hear like sound like. So it's mostly by ear and just by repetition of doing it so many times, you know. First thing that I started with here is this piano from Keyscape. It's literally just two chords, I think. One chord right here, and then it goes down right here. I just kept it super simple, and I've got rhythm going right here. And I just did this to make it feel more alive. And I also played this live on the keyboard so that it had more feeling. And that's something that you definitely want to do whenever you're making these like soul and gospel samples to make them sound like super realistic. It's the Keyscape Wing Upright Piano. And then for effects on that, all I did is I just put the vinyl one preset on it. And then the second thing that I added was this organ right here, following the same exact chords, but I just, I didn't play with the rhythm. I let it go out. And then also it's got like this slide right here, like on the keyboard, I just went up like all the keys up like that to go into it. Cause organ players do that a lot. They like slide into the chords that they're playing. So those together sound like this. Turn the distortion up a ton just to get it like super gritty and sound vintage. And then on top of it, I just took the same organ preset and then I played this like top line melody over it. After that, I just added this bass line right here. I just grabbed this stock bass from Logic. It's just following the chords, like the exact same notes, the, the root notes, but then this little thing at the end, they do that a lot in the, like the old gospel music. So I had like the, the choir idea in my head. This is what my vocal sounds like. Holy Spirit. And then I <laughs> layered that shit four times, like low voice, high voice, just to get like a choir sound. Holy Spirit. I'm gonna add this little lead vocal on top right Holy here. Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Holy Spirit. And then after that, I sent it to like this gospel choir that I work with, and just told them to like re-sing it exactly as I did it. Holy Spirit, rain down on me. Rain down on me. Holy Spirit, gotta rain down, rain down rain down now. On me. Gotta rain down on me. It's kind of expensive just to hire pe like session people to do all this stuff because you got to pay them up front. So with every loop that you make, there's like a risk that it doesn't turn out right and then you waste your money. But um, I just go on Fiverr and search like if I want a soul singer, I'll look up like soul vocals, soul backup vocals, blah, 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 blah. That's how I found um, that girl, Paula. She did the vocals on the beautiful sample of Future and DJ Khaled. The next thing I did is I just I played these same exact chords on the guitar. And then I just added like a little accent slide note on top and it sounds like this. For a 
effects on it. I just went over here in Logic, electric guitar, clean guitar, and then I chose the Tremo voice preset, which is what I use for like all my soul loops. I wanted it to have like more, more of like a powerful and like aggressive feeling. So I grabbed this Sugar Hill brass from Logic and I just put down the bass notes on here. And this just kind of sits in the back and it just gives it more like power. It's like, it's almost like a second bass. Next thing I added this, oh, this plugin is slept on. BBC Symphony Orchestra, it's free. Well, I think it, maybe it used to be free. I don't know if it's paid now, but it's like the same stuff, uh, Spitfire Audio, same people who make labs, this shit is crazy. And then I just put down these strings right here. Last things I added were just like these drum breaks. I got this one from Mario Luciano on Polyphonic Music Library. He taught me a lot of game on like how to make my soul stuff crazy. I took his course on, um, you can, it's like the Polyphonic Music course or some shit. And then I also got a tambourine and a maraca and I left like all the noise in there. So there's just like more texture and sounds like more vintage, I don't know. And then I added like a crash and then And then I bounced it down into one file, put on this effect right here, my own preset, but you can just copy these settings. It's like super, super distorted. And then I also took the width down to make it more mono because the, the samples back then weren't so stereo like they are now. And then I put this plugin, it's crazy. I put the blues jam preset from the UAD, whatever tape recorder this is, EQ, because there were some super harsh frequencies. Without the effects, it sounds like this. So it actually makes it quieter, but it it like it distorts it way more. So it sounds way more authentic. And then after that, all I did for like the finished version of the sample is I went down here, just changed my flex speed, whatever, and just sped it up and it pitches it up too. This is the first thing I started with. It's just like the most basic D sharp minor chord, standard dark pattern, and then just pitch it down five. That preset is this right here. I use this all the time, the Wino Frontier. I think after that, I just put like the piano bass notes. Just following the root notes of the chords and then after that i had this added like the the trap bell if you go to the the pad section of Balk balkan ethnic orchestra this battle burial grounds it's just like a accent sound like super in the back but it just gives it like that creepy uh, like evil feeling so it's Last part, of, I put some kind of string. And then once I had all the music, this is where the real different sauce comes in. The first thing I did is I made like an old 3-6 Mafia, like old school Memphis drum pattern. I started with this kick right here. 
And then I added this like three, six mafia hi-hat. So you like added some snares, open hats. And then I added this snare roll right at the very end, like super Memphis, like the 16th notes. And then after that, I just tried to make some stereotypical, like super generic trap lyrics that anyone could get on. I recorded these vocals right here. And the way that I do it, I didn't have it in this project file anymore. I must have just bounced it down. But I record like 10 layers of myself saying the same thing. And I'm like screaming it at the mic. So it's like super aggressive and dark. Freak hoes hitting on my line. I do this all the time. Freak hoes hitting on my line. I do this all the time. That's saying over and over. And then I combined the vocal together with the drum beat and then it sounds like this with no effects so then you have like a, a royalty free original like memphis old school sample that you can put on top of it and then i put the same preset that i use on the soul loops distort it on rc20 and then i grabbed the same blues jam preset because i'm trying to make this sound like it's coming from like a tape player in like the 90s or stuff like that like super distorted and vintage and gritty and then i cut out some low end and a little bit of high end with the eq added another rc20 i'm not sure oh this is like eqing it again i took all the other effects off besides the vinyl noise and that's compared to like the clean version like this and I also like take out a lot of high end and low end just to make room for drums and an actual rapper to get on it because if all the high ends coming through there's not enough room I keep sections without the vocals because like really you would only use this section with the vocal for like an intro or a bridge or some shit like that but whenever someone's actually rapping on it or putting drums on it you want it to like not have the vocal that's taking up a bunch of space so then I just kind of Yeah, that's pretty much it for that one. First thing I started with was this morning strings preset inside of augmented strings. This super simple two note pattern right here, and then I pitched it down five for the second half of the pattern. Next thing I added was this Battle Burial Grounds preset from Balkan Ethnic Orchestra, the pad section. And this is just kind of like an accent texture that I put on the bass note of each chord. So again, it's this D sharp and then pitch down five to this B flat. Last sound, I just grabbed this preset from the Mellotron V collection. I just laid down the simple minor chord progression following the notes that I was using before. I added this side chain plugin right here, Shaper Box, that just gives us some more sauce and rhythm. And then all together, it sounds like this.
Yeah, that shit was crazy. The <laughs> rolls on the, the 808s, that shit's stupid. All right, well, man, that's a wrap, bro. I appreciate you for tapping in. We're going to lock in some content, y'all. We got more content on the way, but appreciate you, bro. Hell yeah. Good talking to you, man.